Now, John chapter 21. John chapter 21. Look what it says right here. We out of the 21st verse. I meant the chapter. Let's go to verse 12, which is 21 backwards. Jesus said unto them, come and dine. Now this after Jesus then rose from the dead. And none of the disciples asked him, who art thou? Because they knew that it was the Lord. Look at verse 13. Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish likewise. Now saints, where did he get this fish? Where did he get this bread? He didn't get it from the supermarket. Nobody had no EBT cards. <laughs> Nobody was selling no food stamp. About two of y'all sell food stamp on here. Nobody was selling no food stamp. <laughs> Jesus is withdrawing from the supernatural account here. Which you... <laughs> That brother always in the line, always trying to get you to buy some food stamp. They always sending you signals. Nah, man, you see his middle finger, brother? Wu Tang Clang ain't nothing to mess with. See, I gotta say that guy can't block nobody on here no more. Damn, it was the days. <laughs> John chapter 21. Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth to them and fish likewise. Now look what verse 14 say. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to the disciples after he was risen from the dead. Are you catching this? Jesus is taken from the supernatural account. After he is risen from the dead. What I want you to see that a part of the resurrection power is that you have access to this hidden bread, this hidden fish, this hidden provision. You got access to it. Let me say this. You can call in this hidden provision. You, watch it. You can say, Father, in Jesus' name, I call in the hidden riches of secret places. I call in the hidden bread that you want to supply me with. My daily bread. Saints, did you notice that Jesus told them to pray? Give us this day our daily bread. Here you go. In the Lord's prayer, Jesus is saying, step into this supernatural account. See, if you don't get a revelation, when you're saying, give us this day our daily bread, you, you don't, you're just going to think, okay, the Lord provide for me today. No, 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 no. This is an entrance into the heavenly account, the heavenly places, the heavenly treasury box, the treasure box. The government of Jesus. Give us this day our daily bread. I mean, let me step into this heavenly account and, and, and function from this heavenly account and operate in this heavenly account and live off of this heavenly account and, and, and enjoy this heavenly account and see this manifestation of this heavenly account. And let, let me uh, be a blessing and transfer this heavenly account to everybody I meet or everybody that, that would heed you like I'm heeding you. Not everybody I meet because. Hmm. 
Drop it. Lil Uzi. <laughs> Lil Uzi spirit. Don't worry about it. Some of y'all don't know what I just did. You, you looking for a miracle. Now, saints, look at this here. It says, Jesus then cometh. When Jesus cometh, money cometh. I'm saying that now. Look at what Jesus, Jesus cometh first. And now here comes the bread. That's the same way it's supposed to be in your life. Jesus come, then here comes the bread. Here come the fish, supernatural money. Because that's where he put the, the supernatural money at, in the fish mouth. So every time you see fish and, and fish being provided, it's supernatural money being provided. Now, saints, like I said, the Lord going to give you money miracles like he did for me and like he do, do for everybody. Because he not respect their persons to get you back into financial dignity. But the supernatural money going to keep on coming. See, let me just say this. You ever heard them say that saying, more money, more problems? That's a daggone lie. More money, more instructions. So watch this here. Let me just say this. If you battle with the little small ant instructions that you have now, how could God make you move in higher finances? So, so that's, that's why it's a call to mature yourself now. Are you getting depressed right now? Or do you get sad right now? That's not a good look. <laughs> no, no, no. The Lord will bless you. He'll take care of you and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? He'll, he'll bring you up. But what I'm telling you is that um, that's not a good look. See, your whole life is about impressing God, not impressing people. Because the truth of the matter is you can't really impress people. People are crazy. But with the Lord, you can impress him through excellence, you know. And if you choose the route of excellence and you walk in that excellence, the Lord will know that, all right, let me, it's time for me to take them higher. Now, saints, let me just tell you this. The Lord is a movie director. He knows everything, but he functions as if he's in the now. So he do a lot of things off of an experiment. You can have a assignment that God already has for you, and the Lord can say, "Well, uh, I want you to, I want you to do something different here. I want you dot 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 dot." Now that's spontaneous. What was he doing? He's experimenting. It's like you got a GPS route and you know the route on the GPS. And the Lord said, wait, let's not go here yet. Let's uh, pull over to the side and go here. Now, if you are somebody that is set and you done made your mind up, I ain't, no, 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 nothing, nothing. What will happen is that could become a stumbling block to you. And so then the Lord know, okay, I can't take you there. At least right now. I'll take you there later on. But watch this. If you receive the raw anointed. And you receive the fresh breath of God. When the Holy Ghost quicken you. You're going to be quick to the quickening. It won't offend you. It'll just suspend you. So you, the flesh, is in time out. You, the spirit, is on a divine assignment. And when you start living by the spirit, all riches flow, all wealth flow, all money flow, all health flow, all joy flow. See, in the flesh, none of those things flow. In the flesh, there dwells no good thing. There's sorrow in the flesh. 
there's stress in the flesh. There's burdens in the flesh. But in the spirit is, is power, glory, dominion. Now, one of the dominions that the Lord will give to you as a true worshiper, as someone that's sowing their way out, as someone that's walking in the spirit, is that one of the, uh, the supernaturals that God going to give you is you going to be able to become a lender. Becoming a lender means that you are fulfilling Acts chapter 10 verse 38. You go around doing good. See the lender it takes you out of being a pretender. Because now it's a reality, like even if you don't say a word, people marvel at the fact that you're able to do good. Saints, there's people that will ask you out of curiosity. Who are you? Because of the good that they see that you're able to do. And it's a soul winning tactic. See, the Lord want to make you a lender so people can see him through you and your kindness and your generosity and your ability to give. You see? So he'll take you higher and higher in this. Okay, John chapter 21, look what it say. Jesus then cometh and taketh bread. Where is he taking the bread? He taking the bread from his supernatural account. This provision is in the storehouses of heaven. And now he releasing it to the earth. See, this, this life is glorious. Jesus withdrawing from this supernatural uh, realm that he created himself. And he's showing the disciples, hey, do you know that I have this supernatural account right here? This supernatural account, I'm making it available to you right now. And watch this. He letting them see it with their own eyes. So I, I'm going to say this to you and I want you to catch this. John 21 was a classroom because Acts chapter 4 was where they was going to become the teachers. See, oh my God. Catch this, catch this. And John 21, they being judged by Jesus. They're being judged by Jesus. And now in Acts chapter 4, they went from uh, John 21 being students, now in Acts 4, now they are teachers. So now they are doing what Jesus was doing to them. Watch this. Jesus was their soul. They were sowing into Jesus. So now Jesus promotes them to become soul in Acts 4. And now the people are sowing into them as if they're Jesus because they are now functioning as Christ. So when the people are sowing into them, this is what they're doing. They're taking bread. And they're taking the fish. And they're displaying financial power. What did Acts chapter 4 say? They gave witness of the power of the resurrection and great grace was upon them and none of them lacked. So they given the demonstration, the witness of the resurrection power. And what's happening? The people are seeing money move from the heavenly account. See money, supernatural money move, wealth move. Riches move. 
favor with God and men move. Mountains move out the way. Blankets are destroyed. Yokes are destroyed. The works of the devil is destroyed. Because this heavenly account is sitting on a child of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And see, what Jesus was doing was he was fresh out of the grave. Let me say it like this. Jesus was fresh out of jail. You ever thought about it like that? Jesus went to jail so that you wouldn't go to jail. Jesus was fresh out of prison. The Bible said he went to go preach the gospel to the spirits that was in prison. Jesus was fresh out of prison. Imagine that. Jesus went to jail so that you won't. Jesus took the life sentence so that you wouldn't have to receive it. Jesus became all your financial issues right there at the cross. All your mental issues. Jesus became all your, your soulless issues. Le coranta parre de becerro to corante. Neranda mazorra masse kerre de becerro dos. Ze rosto corre mante kerre mante carama. Every emotional battle, every mental battle, every physical battle, every marital battle, every child battle, every family battle, every focus battle, every receptivity battle, every traditional battle was destroyed when Jesus went to the cross and when he went to jail and when he went to prison. So what he did, he destroyed your mental prison. He destroyed your emotional prison. He destroyed your physical prison. He's destroyed all of your your, your prisons that Satan would try to pitch you in. And, and when he was there, he went on your behalf so that you won't have to go. So that's why no devil can keep you in depression because that's a prison. And Jesus went to the prison. The chastisement of your peace was upon him. Isaiah 53, I believe. The chastisement of his peace, your peace, was upon Jesus. So he was chastised so that you can have peace of mind. So calm down. Because the peace of mind is paid for. What Colossians say? Let the peace of God rule. Let it rule. So you got to yield to every anointing that belongs to you. If you don't yield to it, if you don't take it by force, it's going to be there waiting for you and you're going to suffer unnecessarily. Watch this. Stop expecting a reward for receiving a sword that you got power over. You know, sometimes people, people go through the sword. The sword is the curse. And the sword could combat you. You understand? And while the sword is combating you, it's like then you want a, you want a reward for the sword. No, no, no. Take power over the sword. Because you got a two-edged sword. Why you got a two-edged sword? Because the Lord knew that the sword was going to come. But you got a two-edged so, so you got double, you got a, a, a higher level, a higher measure to combat the actual sword that, that will come from the curse realm. Remember Isaiah 120, if you refuse and rebel, you'll be devoured by the sword. Sword. See, you got a two-edged sword. Um, somebody said jagged edge. Forget them. Um, uh, don't think about it. Uh, 
ding, dun, ding, dun, ding, ding. It, it sound like all the R&B songs that sound like that. Dun, 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 dun. You've been hit by it. Like, Michael, get out of here. I'm trying to sing this Jagged Edge. <laughs> all the songs was like that. Since I used to wait till my mother was somewhere in there, I tried to pound MTV. Bye, 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 bye. Winning and trying to two. Singing and singing and song to two. I believe that one of the singers in NSYNC, Backstreet Boys, whatever they call them, they was from the theme song from the cops. Ain't no, ain't no lie. Bye, bye, bye. You be leaving school, girl be right, you let us, you tell us, bye, 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 bye. MTV. Who, who, what, what, what his name was? Give it to me, Holy Ghost. Carson Daly. Man, Carson Daly. Blessed be his name. Carson Daly lost all that weight, you can't recognize him. Listen, stop looking all extra different when we can't recognize you. <laughs> so, so, hey, I'm Carson Daly. No, you're not. Carson Daly, I know smell like chicken grease. We come to be flex you. Shout, 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 shout. Watch MTV used to come on, then you see all this stuff going on and stuff. Then Britney Spears used to have this song, Oops, I ain't did it again. I'm playing with your heart. See, Britney was singing songs that made her mind go into that place. Oops, I ain't did it again. I'm playing with your heart. Blessed be God. <laughs> when I was young, I thought, I thought, no, nah, I was just young. I ain't know too much. I, shoot, I, I thought, man, maybe I let Britney Spears cut my hair. Shoot. Yeah, it'd be an honor. <laughs> in the background playing the song that we know. Oops, I ain't did it again. Ow, you done cut me out of the air, Britney. You cut me out of the air, Britney. Yeah, you cut me on the air. <laughs> Oops. Oops. I... Oops. I ain't did it again. <laughs> you play with your... Oh, God. Brittany, you... You just cut me with the razor, Brittany. Brittany, you cut me with the razor. <laughs> The song, the song go right back. The song she she done, she on time to cut the song went right back. Oops, I ain't did it again. You're up there bleeding. You're up there like nervous. Like when this gonna end? Uh, maybe maybe this way. Like I saw it. I saw it differently. <laughs> Brittany up there shaving you like color purple. You oh, Brittany. The song come back again. Oops, I ain't did it. I ain't playing with your heart. Yeah, you playing with my heart because I, I ain't see it like this. This is not how I fantasized it. This is not how I fantasized it, Brittany. I got it. Come on. Now, saints, I'm about to take a direction concerning this that you never heard before. Jesus then cometh. I'm in John 21 in verse 13. Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth to them and fish. 
and gave it to them. Now let's go to verse 15. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, lovest thou me more than these? Lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And then the Lord said to him, Feed my lambs. He saith again, Simon, son of Jonas. Not the Jonas brothers. Lovest thou me? Now listen, my brothers and sisters. <laughs> he saith unto him, Yea, Lord, yea. Thou knowest that I love you. And the Lord said unto him, Feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. And Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Now, saints, watch this here. Remember he said, Feed my lambs, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. Now, watch this. This is what I want you to catch. Jesus had just revealed to Peter the supernatural account. Again, after he rose from the dead, he had already showed Peter the supernatural account. Now, watch this. Now, and I never gave this revelation like this, but there's depths. And heights, and I'm in that rank right now. I'm in that depth with the Lord. What Jesus is telling him, I just fed you from the account. Now go and train the people how to eat off of this account, just like I showed. No, no, now watch this here. Why is he only talking to Peter about this? Because like Jesus told me, Peter is the biggest sower in his ministry. So he talking to the biggest sower. Why did he talk to Mary Magdalene? She the biggest sower. So he telling Peter, you know about this supernatural account. So go and feed my lambs. The lambs are those that are dying to themselves. They're being processed. The sheep are those that are maturing in the voice of God now. And they're being led by God. And the assignments are greater. The responsibilities are greater. The instructions are greater. To whom much is given, much is required. So the lamb, now they're coming out of dying to themselves And being free from sin. And not yielding to their feelings, their flesh. And the devil and all this stuff. And now the Lord is saying, first, get them. Let them know that there's a higher level of life. Because they need inspiration if they're going to leave this slavery. This slave mindset to sin. This slave mindset to, to failure and flaws and imperfections and disobedience. If they're going to leave this slave mindset of falling into traps and falling into wrong decisions and wrong thoughts. So, so let them have something that they can rejoice in so that it can occupy their mind so that they can get the revelation that I got something better for them so the devil won't trick them with what he's trying to get them to become a prisoner and a slave to. And then go and feed the sheep. Those are those that have cut off much of the deception of Satan. So Satan can't really talk to them easily. Because remember my sheep, 
They know my voice. They hear my voice. Another one they will not follow. My sheep. So they are at a level where they are very prophetic. They know when someone is not coming in the name of the Lord. Uh, they know when that is not the route that the Spirit of God is taking them. They know when that counsel is not from God. They know when that conversation is a witchcraft conversation is not bringing them into joy, is bringing them into heaviness. So watch this here. Jesus is now giving Peter the authority to transfer the realm to them. Now Jesus is telling Peter, you go feed them. So watch this. Now you know why Peter had the authority to step to Ananias and Sapphira and say, where the money at? Now you know why he took that approach. Because he had received authority from Jesus to command, demand, and release land, and train for sowing hands. So, so, now you know why he stepped to Ananias and Sapphira. Like, see, isn't it crazy? Isn't it mighty? How I'm bringing the whole revelation. Because the Lord had gave him the authority to feed everybody in the body of Christ this realm. So now Peter is, is confronting folk. Because he's like, well, you say you're in the body of Christ, right? So, so. I'm, I'm letting you know this how the body of Christ flow, and, and this is this how this how Jesus roll. So that stemmed from Peter in John twenty one, having the Lord Jesus after the resurrection show him that place. 